In this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about rocket aerodynamics. And again, thanks to Tom Saradet for putting these slides together. Um, this presentation has a lot of slides, and I'm going to go through them really quickly, a lot of these slides really quickly, because I just really want to expose you to the, uh, the bigger concepts. I will make the presentation available for you to uh, read if you want to get some more information. So let's talk about aerodynamics. The word aerodynamics has two parts, aero and dynamics. So aero indicates, of course, that we're talking about air. Uh, dynamics in science or physics really means that something is changing with time. So the word aerodynamics means airflow that's changing with time. The opposite of dynamics is actually called statics. So that means that all the forces are, are balanced or it's not moving. Well, let's look at some things that affect uh, a rocket, for example, in this case. So the size and shape, uh, and this is true for, uh, for anything, not just a rocket, uh, but the size and shape. Uh, we want the rocket to go fast through the air so that's it's long and thin and it has some aerodynamic surfaces that we'll talk about um, motion is very important so how fast it's going and where it says inclination to flow here what it's really referring to is the angle at which that object is with respect to the airflow and then also, of course, the air itself is important. Uh, the mass of the air, viscosity, or how sticky it is, and uh, the temperature of the air, uh, which relates to the density of the air. So there are four forces that act on anything that goes through the air. It could be your car, it could be an airplane, uh, it could be a rocket, uh, and there's only four. So there's lift, drag, weight, and thrust and we'll talk a little bit about each one of those four so a couple of important things in this slide that I want to call your attention to um, we talk about aerodynamic forces and but they act in different different places on the rocket so for example here you see thrust in green and weight going down. Weight always goes towards the earth. Those two forces act through a point called the center of gravity. Uh, some people use the term center of mass. In many cases it's the same thing. Uh, but that acts through the center of gravity which relates to the properties of the rocket itself. Lift and drag, however, operate through a point called the center of pressure and we'll talk about um, how we calculate those uh, in another lesson. But two important points, two important things. Um, one thing to note though about this rocket is it does have, you see it's tilted at an angle. If it were going straight up, we actually wouldn't have any lift. We would just have thrust, weight, and drag from air movement. So if we talk about lift and drag, uh, it's kind of obvious if something is just sitting there, it has no lift, has no drag, because it's not moving through the air at all. So both lift and drag have to do with the geometry of the rocket and some of the components, for example, fins, for example, uh, have a big effect on drag and lift if there is any. So drag, uh, again, there's no drag if it's not moving through the air. Uh, and drag is a force that resists motion. So think about sticking your, sticking your hand out the window of your car. If your car is traveling, and if you put your hand flat against the wind, you know, you're going to have more drag. You're going to feel a greater force because you have more drag. If you put your hand and kind of slice through the air, it's going to have less drag. That's the force you feel in your hand. That's drag. Now, if you took an aerodynamics class, you would spend several weeks studying all the different components of drag. 
I'm going to go through a lot of those things very quickly and just kind of expose you to them so you kind of know what they are. Uh, there's skin friction drag. Uh, there's a different kind of flow, laminar flow and turbulent flow. Laminar means it's smooth, uh, and in that case you have less drag. Turbulent means it's swirling around, and in that area you have a lot more drag. There's pressure drag. Uh, again, that's think of that example again where you have your car or you're moving your car and you have your hand out the window. That's what you part of what you feel. Uh, and there's also um, dynamic drag. Interference drag comes from things that kind of stick out of the main body. Your car. Uh, I'm sorry, your hand sticking out of the window of the car. Um, here, for example, uh, for a rocket, things that stick out and cause interference drag are fins um, and the launch lug. So we want to make sure that when we create that launch lug uh, or buy a launch lug, that it is aerodynamic. Little things can make a lot of difference. We want these things to be as smooth as possible to reduce our drag. And then finally, there's a thing called base drag or uh, fin tip vortex and that has to do with uh, an area of pressure that's at the the back of the rocket here you see the same thing uh, on semis that are traveling down the the interstate sometimes you might see a little shape on the back like a little bubble on the back that's actually to reduce base drag and it increases the mileage of a semi so we want to decrease that Parasitic drag, again, is something that it's uh, related to interference drag and is very, very, very close to that. So anything that kind of sticks out uh, and causes stickiness, that's going to be parasitic drag. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, fin shape, for example. So if you were to look at uh, a fin, it's really the same thing as an aircraft wing. Well, if I were to slice that and look at the side, uh, look at the cross section, that's kind of what we're looking at here. And it's a little bit intuitive uh, for a lot of people, but we have two different shapes here, and the blue lines indicate airflow. So on the left you have a rectangle and on the right you have something that's uh, a little bit more rounded and this is typically what we would find or what we would want for our fin. We don't want flat surfaces, that causes a lot more drag uh, uh, and all different kinds of drag. So we want something shaped like a wing if we can get it to be that way. Um, this talks a little bit about how fins work, and I'm not going to really get into a whole lot about the science, only to tell you that uh, the shape does matter. There's actually, if you have um, that rectangle from the previous slide, the, the, the pressure waves here uh, would look a lot different and you would see a lot more drag. And it shows different areas of high pressure and low pressure and so on, but having a rounded shape does help reduce drag. It doesn't eliminate it, but it does help reduce it quite a bit. Weight, I don't think I need to go into weight a whole lot. You know what weight is. Every rocket has weight. One thing to know about weight, the relationship between weight and thrust, they are opposite. So to get a rocket to even launch, you have to have your thrust be greater than the weight. If your rocket is moving straight up, your thrust has to be greater than the weight plus the drag. Uh, thrust comes from one thing, and that's the motor. Um, and typically, uh, and just as it's shown here, your thrust is going to act, if you built it properly, your thrust is going to act in a straight line straight up the, the rocket, and it's going to propel it up. And that concludes the aerodynamic force presentation.